So the message I have for you this morning is called, Remove the Stumbling Blocks, Hence the Rock on the Stage. I think that thing's probably still cold. i tell you what, it was five minutes before service, and I sent uh, Brian outside. I said, Brian, I need a rock for my message. So that's the biggest one we could conjure up for right now. So I put it on a thing so, we could, so you could see it. Um, we've been talking a lot around here about reaching the lost, Right? And, you know, as soon as you got when it got it founded, it was the, 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 uh, the mission statement was reach the lost at any cost. Reach the lost at any cost. And I believe that's what we need to take up. It's not an old-fashioned statement. I think it should be the, the statement for today. I think it should be for right now. We need to get a mindset that we're going to reach the lost at any cost. I got about three of you with me. Okay. We are. We're going to try to reach the lost at any cost. I'm, your family needs this. You got friends and you got family. You got people. When I talk about lost people, that automatically comes to your head. That they're nice people, but they don't know Jesus. And Jesus is the only way. I don't care what everybody else says, the world says. Um, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to the Father but by Him. So we need to try to reach the lost at any cost. But what if that cost comes at your pride? Laying down your pride. Have you thought about that? Putting my pride aside. You're gonna, you, to reach the lost, you're going to you're, you're gonna have to lose your pride. I'm going to have to lose my pride. Amen? To reach the lost, I'm going to have to push, push aside my personal comfort. My personal comfort. It's going to cost me something to reach the lost. How about laying aside your ego? Amen? I, the Lord gave me this message uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. I was, I was studying, and he, he whispered the word stumbling block to me. The Holy Spirit did. Two words, stumbling block. And so I started thinking about that. We want a revival. We, we talk about reaching the lost, but I believe that we have to remove the stumbling blocks in our lives to be effective for the kingdom of God. Amen? And so I want to talk to you this morning. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you this morning and examine your heart, examine your life and say, is there, is there some stumbling blocks in my life that's causing me to be effective in reaching people for the lost? And if you got your Bibles, turn to Romans 12. I'm going to read this out of two different translations. The first translation is going to be the New King James. I like the King James. I study it. Um, but I like other translations too. Uh, the Bible says, sing a new song unto the Lord. The truth is the same. A lot of times the truth, when we're singing about the Lord, the truth is always the same, but sometimes the tune's different. And that's the kind of how I, I do it. It stirs up my thought process. But I love the King James because it's like an old friend. It's familiar. It's my comfort, and I love it. So I'm going to read it out of that. Then I want to read it out of one called the Passion Bible, and I want you to hear it. So here's the first one, and you probably all know this verse. You probably, If you were raised in church, you know it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. This is Paul. He's basically begging them. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. You see this? This is good. This is, this is Paul. He's, t he's saying, look, I'm asking you, I'm beseeching you on God's, on God's behalf, present your body holy. If we want to reach the lost, we're going to have to do it by, by doing what Paul said here. Now, I'm going to read it out of the Passion Bible. Listen to this. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? To surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices, and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop intimid. Uh, 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 thank you. Stop imitating the, the ideas and opinions of this culture around you, but be inwardly transformed. Formed by the Holy Spirit, inwardly transformed through a total reformation of how you think. 
This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. I love that one statement there. A life of holiness is a genuine expression of worship. Isn't that good? A life of holiness. If you really want to worship the Lord, make your life a life of holiness. I mean, we can come in here and we can sing songs and we can raise our hands and we can, we can, we can, we can do all the wonderful things of worship. I love worship, and I'm not going to downplay that because the Bible says when praises go up, His presence comes down. I love His presence, don't you? But that's not real, real true worship. Real, real true worship is when you start living a holy life, a life that is pleasing to God in every way. You love God so much that it transforms you from the inside out, and you become so attractive to everyone around you that the world sees you and they say, you got something different in you that I don't have and i got to have it. You've got peace. You've got joy. You've got things that, that I see in your life. And it comes through a life of holiness. I was, now, I was, I was raised in a Pentecostal holiness church in, in Missouri. And, and we felt the presence of God at times. But a lot of times they, that you, you were being taught rules with, and regulations without relationship. You see what I'm saying? When you get rules and regulations without relationship, you fall in love with the, 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 the Jesus, he'll transform you from the inside out. You won't have to tell somebody how to, how to look or how to talk or how to do these things. It just happens. And that's what holiness is. And, and, and I want, but holiness is still the way. If we really want to reach the lost, you gotta, you, we, we have to live a holy life. We've got to start be, letting God transform us from the inside out. Amen? Paul, Paul when I was reading this, uh, Romans 12, 13, and 14, he lays out a beautiful argument. Paul should have been a lawyer. I mean, it was be- his, the way he writes, he presents a case, and then he lays out all the evidence. And, he's, and basically how he's doing here is he, he, that first two verses, he lays out a case that says, you want to live a holy life, live a holy life. Live your life as a sacrifice to the Lord. It's a sacrifice. You got to crucify the flesh. It just is. You know, um, through the Holy Spirit, you can do this. Amen? So I, I, I challenge you this week pick up your Bible. I've not got time to teach the whole depth of these three chapters, but you pick it up and you read it. You probably got five Bibles at home. You got one on your phone. You might as well pick them up and start reading them, right? Turn to somebody and say, read it this week. That's right. Romans 12 and 13. But look at the argument that he lays out for this life of holiness. This, that's, that, that's your reasonable service to the Lord, he said. Not hard, just a reasonable service. And, and he's basically saying this, a picture of holiness is this. You love God, you love others. You do good, you love others. And if you read on in that chapter, there's a, actually a verse in there that says, no, no. Really love others. Don't just say you love others. Don't pretend to love others. Really love others. And then he goes, don't be lazy. Serve God and love others. Can you see the theme? (laughs) You can say you love somebody all you want, but you better show them how much you love them. Talk's cheap. Amen? And so if you really want a life of holiness, and, and so... I had a, a man come when we first started the church. He started the church with us, helped us start, and, and he was only with us a, a small time, Alan Mayhew. But some of the things Alan Mayhew said to me, we didn't get a whole lot of conversations, but it'll ring in my head. And one of the things that he said to me, because it was under the power of the Holy Spirit, he said, don't preach on a certain sin too long, Tim. He said, it'll pop up in your church. He said, I don't know how it works, because he pastored a long time, but he said, it does. It does. And I've seen that. When people asphyxiate on the darkness, darkness comes into their life. So the Lord gave me a revelation this week. It was great. Now, I should have saw it earlier, but I'm a little slow learner. I was sitting at my desk, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, you know how, it, how, how darkness, if you preach on it? And he, said, he said, you've seen that, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, the opposite is true, too. You start preaching the church in the direction that you want it to go. You start preaching about Jesus. You start preaching about the Holy Spirit. 
I'm telling you what, you need the Holy Spirit this morning. If you go to a church where you don't hear about the Holy Spirit, you need to get in a church where they talk about the Holy Spirit because Jesus said this. He said, it's expedient that I go away and I go to my Father. But when I get to my Father, He's going to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and He's going to lead you and He's going to guide you into all truth. So if you seek Him and you seek His truth, He'll lead you. Amen. It's good. I'm getting excited, but i gotta got to come down here because we got... We got much to go. Lots of lots of territory to cover this morning. So these next next couple chapters, he starts talking about stumbling blocks. If you want this holy life, if you want to be a witness to other people, how many wants to be a witness to other people? How many knows you got family, you got friends that are relying on you to show Jesus? Amen. And so he says basically saying, remove the stumbling blocks in your life. You got stumbling blocks. He does it really kind, really gentle, very beautiful. Uh, uh, Paul does. And I want to tell you about a stumbling block. A stumbling block works both ways. So many times we think that a stumbling block is something we have that's causing somebody else to stumble. But it causes you to stumble too. It's just a block. It's a block all the way around. It's a block for you, and it's a block for them. It's a block for people that you're trying to lead to the Lord. It causes them to stub their toe on it. So I want to lay that foundation when we start thinking about what a stumbling block is. And then I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to show you, do I have any of these in my life? Here's the first stumbling block you got to get out. It's the rock of offense. You'll find it in chapter 12, right after he reads this. It talks about the offense of people. I tell you what, you can't turn on the TV anymore where somebody's not getting offended, right? Jesus said in the last days, many will be offended. It's a sign of the time. Many will be offended. But you people, you can't say the right thing. Um, people persecute you, don't they? They'll talk bad about you. They'll do things. They'll, 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 and, and it causes a stumbling block to come in your life. There are people that live, when you try to live for Jesus, there's people that live down here. That's just the way it is. I'm just, I'm just talking to you. They have no clue who Jesus is. It's like getting mad at a dog for peeing on a bush because they have a sinful nature. They're going to do what the sinful nature does. So you get offended because I can't believe they're doing that. Well, they're a sinner. That's a rock of offense. And I'll tell you what, you, you turn on the TV and you say, I can't believe you get so worked up about what they're doing, what sinners are doing, you keep stubbing your toe against it that it causes a stumbling block for you. You see, it works both ways. And then, but you can overcome this. You know how you can remove a, a stumbling block of, of offense? And don't say pick up the stone and hit him with it. Because that's what your flesh wants to do. That's what I want to do a lot of times. I don't know about you. You ever done that? Say, like, I want to just hit him with that stumbling block. Knock him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> but the stumbling block, think about it. The way to to remove this stumbling block is to do good. Paul literally answers why how how you can remove the stumbling block of the rock of offense by doing good. It's Romans 12, verse 20. Listen to this. I didn't write it. Paul wrote it. Okay? And if your enemy is hungry, buy him lunch. Win him over with kindness. Kindness. For your surprising generosity will awaken his conscience, and God will reward you with favor. Never let evil defeat you. Many of us are letting evil defeat us. Never let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with good. Amen? If you do good, I'm telling you, you just continue to do good. Don't worry about what other people do. I I preach about this all the time, but this is causing you not to be an effective witness for the Lord. This is causing you not to be able to to tell people about Jesus and say, oh, I want what you got. 
because you're so bitter and so angry and so upset because you got a rock of offense and you got a stumbling block of offense inside of you. Let it go. Just do good. Don't worry about them. They're going to have to answer for them when they get to heaven. I don't praise God. I don't have to answer for them. It is so good. That should take a half the burden off of you right there when you understand. I don't have to answer for your actions. I just got to answer for me. And when I get before the Lord, and, 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 and he says, well, they did this to you. And I don't have to say, well, I did this back to them. I could say, no, I, I, I fed them. I did good. I tried to do good. And he knows that. See, God knows that. He's got the best record keeping. This is good preaching. Remove the stumbling blocks. If you want to save your family, if you want to save people around you, I, I, I pray that this year, that we start loving people, even the unlovable. Because when I said unlovable people, you had about six people jump to your mind. <laughs> but we got, and it wasn't Mo either. <laughs> That's the first stumbling block you got to get out, the rock of offense. Listen to me. If you think about this, you've probably got one, and you need to get it out. Here's the second rock that, that Paul, and all this is found in, in Romans 12, 12 and 13. He's, he's wording it a little bit different than I am. I'm paraphrasing it, but this is, very, this is very clear that you'll see. The second one is called the rock of rebellion. The rock of rebellion. That's where you rebel against authority in every area of your life. You know, God's put people in authority over you. When you look at it biblically, there are people in authority over you. It's, I know it's sometimes tough to play, pray for everybody in the government. I understand that because there'll be people that you disagree with. But he's placed it. Paul said that. He said all authority has been placed by God. He didn't stutter when he said it. He, he, he literally got it from God. God, he put it to pen and he put it down for us to read 2,000 years later. All authority has been given by God. And so we need, and he said, you know how you can get around uh, uh, living? Could you imagine reading that passage and you're living in China? Or you're living where you have to meet underground? And he says, you need to give authority, you need to give honor to authority. Can you imagine that? It would mean a whole lot different. But we, we, we have to start um, honoring the, the ones in authority. I thought about, you say, well, Tim, I don't, I don't know if I believe that. I'm going to show, I'll show you. Remember Daniel, Joseph, and Nehemiah in the Bible? Remember those three? They were under very ungodly kings, very ungodly. But they rose to the top. And you know how they rose to the top? They did what's right. No matter what everybody else says, if the whole world goes that way and all the world was going that way in their environment, they did what's right. And when you do what's right, no matter whatever everybody else says, you will rise. God will bring you to the top. I believe that. I saw it in Dan. You see it in Daniel and Joseph and Nehemiah's life. They were second in the kingdom because they did what's right. And Paul said that. He said, you know how you overcome the, the rock of rebellion in your life? You do what's right. I don't care what they do. You know what you do what's right. If you've got the Holy Spirit living inside of you, he tells you what's right. And if you do it, it, it it'll, it'll remove that rock. And you know what? You'll be a great witness to people around you. But if you grumble and complain about authority and all the things that's going on, they, it's a, it's a, it leaves a distasteful in their mouth, doesn't it? Amen. Win the lost at any cost, even if it's your pride. Boy, that's good. Good preaching, Tim. Good preaching. Amen. All right. Here's the third rock. It's a quick one. It's called the rock of debt. The rock of debt. Romans 13, 8 says this. Owe nothing to anyone. Accept your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. Now, I, I know that, that there's debt, and I know that people, we, you know, I've been in debt in my life. But if at all possible, work to get out of debt because it becomes a stumbling block in your life. It does. There's nothing, I, I'm just trying to say that, that, that at times you have to go. 
But if you can't, but it's not just talking about money here. I want to talk about the debt of giving maybe your word to somebody. Think about this. This is something that I have to really, I have to, I've had to grow in, especially in, in the last six years as a pastor, because I love to help people. I do. But I can't come out and say, I'll help you, I'll help you, I'll help you, I'll help you. Yes, I'll be there, I'll help you, I'll help you. Yes, absolutely. I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you. How many, how, many, how many's got that? This year? I think sometimes Christianity today goes along saying that all the time. I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you. But do you really pray for them? Think about this. The Lord had to show me, and I'm still learning this. I'm learning to say a big fat No. <laughs> and it's not that I don't love you. It's just I know a lot of you. You're right? And you know a lot of you know It's just the way it is. You know a lot. But in, in, in God wants you to help people. I, I remember one time, this is, when, this is the, probably the biggest lesson that one, the Lord showed me. And I've probably shared this, but I'm going to share it again because you need to hear it. I was leading worship at the Lighthouse. And it's a big church. And, and before Lighthouse, before, before I went to, on the stage to, to, to sing, a man came to the front and said, hey, I've got a friend moving here from out of state, and he's going to start a woodworking business. And he said, he said, would you give him a call? I wrote, your, I wrote your, his number down on this card. And I said, yeah, I'll do that, no problem. And I put, put his phone number in my pocket and led worship that morning, and I went home. And I forgot all about it. I hung my shirt up and I forgot all about it. Well, about three, two, three weeks later, I got a letter in the mail that says, I can't believe you call yourself a man of God. You gave your word and you didn't call him. And my first response is, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? I've got three kids. I got four kids. I forgot how many I had. I got four kids. I got four kids. I got a business. I got all these things going on. This guy doesn't, I don't even know what he's got going on. You know, you can feel it. You know, you know, you'd feel it almost puff up inside of you. I can't believe you said that to me. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me so quietly and so gently and said, you gave your word. You gave your word. And it sounded like Jen. <laughs> the Holy Spirit sounds like your wife. I said this in the first service and everybody's like that, so it's good. But it's true. A lot of times your, your Holy Spirit will sound like your wife. And, but but he, he, she, he did. He said, you gave your word. And I thought about it. I prayed about it. And, and, and I will. I'll tell you what. If you tell me something, I'll pray about it. Anymore, I take it home and I pray about it. And, and if I'm wrong, the Holy Spirit will show me. If I'm not wrong, he'll show me that too. Because I, trust me, this last year, I've had to write a lot of things and ask the Lord a lot of things. And he showed me both ways. But I remember that, and, and I, you know, I don't, I had to go back and apologize to that man and say, you're right. I don't want to owe you anything. I had to remove that rock, a stumbling block out of my life because I could have got mad and angry and stubbed my toe and stubbed my toe thinking, who do you think he is? You know what I mean? Think about that. What stumbling blocks do you have? Here's the fourth stumbling block. I got two more. Can you, can you hang with me? You okay? Here's the rock of dirty clothes. <laughs> the rock of dirty clothes. Romans 13, 11 through 14 says this. This is Paul's writing. He said, this is, this is all the more urgent, for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sensual promiscuity. I don't know if I said that right. Probably didn't. And immoral living or in quarreling, or in jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus. And don't think of yourselves by any ways, or don't think of any ways to let yourself in, be indulged by your evil desires. So I was thinking about this. 
We're children of light, right? You're to live in the light as he is in the light. That's what the Bible says. As I walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. That's what the Bible says. There's a reason where if you got the light of Jesus inside of you, you shouldn't go places that are dark. I'm just telling you, if you've got the light of Jesus in you, you've got the Holy Spirit in you, he's like a light that illuminates, and there's places I can't go anymore, right? There's a reason why they keep certain establishments dark. I'm just saying, right? That's part of our clothes. That's what we wear. If I want to reach the lost, I'm talking about reaching the lost at any cost, I just can't go anywhere anymore. I just can't say, well, I can just go, I can go back it up in the club, or I can go out to the, to the, to the bar, or wherever I want to go, and I'm just going to be the greatest witness everywhere, because I'm going to be a little ray of sunshine. That's not how it works. What fellowship does light have with darkness? That's what the Bible says. I, I take you back to the word every time. Amen? What light does, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Here's another clothes we put on. You ready for it? Our language, how we speak. Paul's talking about taking off dirty clothes. Where we go, take it off. Don't put, don't put on dirty clothes. Don't go, don't go places where bad things happen. Amen? Don't speak bad things. Sometimes you can't witness because of your language that's coming out of your mouth. People look at you and say, I, I don't want what they got. Maybe they're a negative, maybe you're, you're negative language. Maybe it's foul language, whatever it is. But let your language be good. Clothe yourself with good language, pleasant language. Ple- uh, language of, I'm thankful. Praise the Lord. Amen? I turn to somebody and say, this is old-fashioned preaching. Let's go ahead and say that. But you know what? It's okay. I'm going back to the foundation. The Word of God was laid before the foundations of the earth, and I'll stand on it till I die. Amen. It'll last. Way after culture changes again and again and again, and people call themselves cats or whatever they want to do, the Word of God will stand. Amen. I'm going to stay with the Word of God. Amen? Here's, here's, another, here's another kind of clothes. Could you imagine our clothes are clothes? Imagine that. Our clothes are clothes, right? I've said this before. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be swimsuit models. You don't know what kind of boy they'll bring home. Amen? Amen. I'm just saying. There's nothing wrong with God created, God created people beautiful. I understand that. But there's a way that we dress. Amen? If it ain't for sale, don't advertise it. Amen? I'm a, man of, I'm a man of God, but I'm still a man, and I can tell you, I know. Amen? <laughs> and boys, you need to make a conscious effort to flee every temptation. Amen? You know, just like Joseph did when he, when he, he ran out of that room, you've got to make a conscious decision I'm not going to stay here and entertain these things. I've got to get out of it. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And how do we remove this rock out of our life? We get into the presence of the Lord. He said that. He said, get into the presence of the Lord. When you get into the presence of the Lord and the light of God, He shines things in us. We just know. Have the the Holy Spirit on the inside. He works from the inside out. Amen? That's good. Turn to somebody and say, all right, let's move on. <laughs> Number five, this is my last rock, okay? It's called the, the rock of self-righteousness. And it's in Romans 14, verses 1 through 2. I have, I've got people on both sides that, that, that are agreeing and, and doubting. They're pr- pretty happy and upset probably on both sides. The holiness crew, and then I also have the, the liberal crew, both of them. Somewhere in there, but that's okay. I'm going with the Word of God. Okay, Romans 14, 1 through 2 says this, accept other believers who are weak in the faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. For instance, one person believes it's okay to eat, all right to eat anything, but another believer 
is uh, with a sensitive conscience, will eat only vegetables. We find this in the body of Christ. Somebody comes, don't know the Lord, never been to church, gets saved, but they're really rough around the edges. You know anybody like that? Your job is not to smooth the edges out. <laughs> do you understand that? You let the Holy Spirit do that. You let the Holy Spirit do that. You just, you just love them. You show them the love of Jesus. You show them what a life of holiness looks like. You get all the rocks out of your life, and they'll want what you got. Amen? Boy, that's good preaching. I love that because, because we, we, we as a church, if we're going to grow, we're going to see some people come in that don't look like you. And they don't think like you. And I tell you what, as the world progresses, and, 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 and if we're going to reach the lost at any cost, they're gonna, you're going you're gonna to have to change some of the, you're, you're going to say, I, I'm going to love that person, no matter if they don't, they look crazy. I think of that commercial where the, you know, you, you turn into your parents. You remember that? You ever seen that commercial where you turn into your parents? And, and the one person walks in, and, and he goes, we all see it. We all see it. We all see it. And he goes, blue hair, you know. You're going to have to love people no matter what. If they believe in Jesus, if they're weak in the faith, you're going to have to come alongside of them and just coach them and love them and show them through the love of Jesus. Amen? Because it, become, it can become a stumbling block for you to reach the lost. And it can be a stumbling block for an a, for a immature believer. And this is where you don't want to go. You do not want to be an, a stumbling block for an immature believer. Because the Bible says this, if you've wounded one of my little ones, he said it's better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown into the sea. Amen? So we need to learn to love. Remember, this, this, this theme of this year, I'm telling you, I know that I know. I, I'm, think, I, I'm so thankful God gave me another word for this year, this year coming, and it's love God and love others. Love God and love others. I'm so thankful for that, aren't you? Amen. Somebody's car is beeping in the parking lot. Just let they know. But God is good. God is good. If you would, just bow your heads with me a minute. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me this morning? What are you speaking to me in my heart? What rocks are in my life that I need to remove? What are there? Is there anything? The first thing I always ask is if you don't know Jesus, if you've not surrendered your life to Jesus, He's the way, the truth, and the life. I never want to give an, uh, leave this place without giving an opportunity for you to know Jesus. To surrender your life and say, Lord, I, I, I give you everything. I've tried, I've tried doing this on my own. I can't do it on my own. I need you, Jesus. And, and to surrender your life. Is there anybody this morning that say, I want to pray and I want to ask Jesus to come in my heart. I want to surrender my life to him. Man. We'll always have altar calls here. There's nothing wrong with it. It's good. Here's the second thing. If you say, I want to reach the lost at any cost, and I want God to remove any, any stumbling blocks in my life, if that's you, come, I want to pray with you. Is there anybody this morning that would say that? Amen. Amen. Is there anybody? Come on. Holy Spirit's here and he's drawing people. If you want to reach the lost at any cost, even if it's your pride and your ego, your comfort, this morning, Jesus is calling. Whatever it is, come, come this morning. I'm going to pray with these folks. I'm up here with them.
Amen. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I pray that just the Holy Spirit would just stir this message this rest of this week. I want to see us reach the lost. I want to see us reach our community. Don't you? Amen. Let's gather up. Let's do circle. Amen. I want to thank everybody again for that came out and and it's been just been working and helping. We can't do it alone, so it was good. It's a good time of fellowship. Does anybody got anything? If you got a prayer request, just raise your hand. This is see as a point of contact of Something in your life that you need. Amen. God sees it. He does. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you for who you are. Jesus, we give you glory and honor in your house. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that you deal with us so gently, so beautifully. And Lord, I pray, I know that you came to give us life and life more abundantly. So, Lord, I pray for everyone that, that maybe that there's sickness, the hands that ro- raised up, that there's sickness in their body. God, I believe that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that you can still heal. I believe that miraculously. And so I pray for a healing touch right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray maybe some people are making decisions or trying to reach uh, maybe a lost loved one or somebody in their family. God, I pray right now that you would give them the wisdom to understand and direction in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for all that you're doing and the blessings you've poured out for us. This is Thanksgiving season, Lord, and we just give you thanks and we give you praise for all the blessings. We thank you for being able to get up this morning and come into church. We thank you for all the the little details and how you've created creation just for us, just for us. So we give you praise, we give you glory. I pray a blessing on each person here. Let it be uh, them say that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day.